join me inside the cabin of the 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible, which seeks to follow in the footsteps of the bodaciously beautiful LC500 coupe, this time with more wind in your hair. This car is not cheap at $102,000 to start, but nor are any of the vehicles it competes against, and this is the only one you can get with a naturally aspirated V8. So I've got good feelings, but feelings aren't worth a dime. So what we need to do is pour over the exterior, break down the interior, and then of course drive it. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is, the 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible. This one is painted in infrared, their name for it. It's a sumptuous shade of red. Reminds me quite a bit of that Levante Trofeo I was just driving. But that one, we didn't have direct sunlight to look at. This one, yeah, we got it. So I'm very pleased with it. There's only one color that I've seen on the LC500 convertible that I actually like better, and that's the structural blue, again, their name for it, that they revealed the car in at, I don't know, LA or New York Auto Show, can't remember. But it was stunning, and that was part of an inspiration trim level. It's like a top-end trim for the car, limited production and it had a white interior. It just all worked. It looked so good. This is good too. Now before we get too deep into the exterior walk around, let me hit you some with him, what? No, ah, no. Nah. Let me hit you with some quick announcements, maybe, if I can get it out. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit that bell to get notified so you can get access to the daily uploads I got for you the walk-arounds, the POV day drives, the POV night drives, the live Q&As, and the reviews like this one. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you're a fan, you want to support me, I really appreciate it, and you can do so a couple ways. You can buy a Miles Per Hour t-shirt like I'm wearing right now, or you can become a patron on my Patreon account. Got a few different tiers with different perks for you, and all in all, just supporting the channel. So, announcements aside, let's talk LC500 convertible style. So up here at the front, dominating the front fascia, is that spindle grille that we've seen on some other Lexus models, but I don't think works anywhere else nearly as well as it does here on the LC500. It just, it goes with the concept car-like styling in a production car, something you can drive on the road. It just, it has presence. and it looks high quality. Yeah, you get up close, those are plastic pieces, but the gunmetal gray finish with the chrome borders on the outside. The Lexus badge isn't too large. Down here, we've got a different color, like a platinum trim piece, and then chrome, formal chrome down there. So they're playing with different colors and different materials here, and it just, eh, it works. It works for me. Moving on to the LED daytime running lights. It's got like a fish hook design. And those are attractive, handsome, perhaps. And then moving on to the headlights, as standard you get LEDs, the projector lights, and this kind of tri-beam pattern with, looks like lightning bolts, accenting the inner housing. Down here you're gonna find your turn signals that are amber, of course. And then in here we've got some air channel to the front tires and brakes but no real big air vents kind of below the headlights like you see in a lot of cars. That's all integrated, the intercoolers, the cooling system for the car. It's all getting air from the front grille because it's oversized. We can see the sharp hood creases. One there, one there. And as we move to the side, give you a front quarter. We can see these optional 21 inch forged alloy wheels that look really good from far away. But, and they, and they work with the convertible more than they do the coupe because you can get them on the coupe as well. But as you get closer, I just, I don't know. There's something about them. Maybe they're not sharp enough. Maybe they're too rounded. Maybe it's the black with the chrome. Maybe it's the etchings in here on the black pieces. There's something about them that I just am not sold on when I'm close. 
you do get 20 inches as standard. So again, these are optional. And I've seen aftermarket wheels on the coupe version of this car that look spectacular. So I'm thinking you could replace those and it would be an upgrade. But those are wrapped in 245 section, front 275 section, rear Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. Good tires. And flowing along to the profile here. It's got very much a yacht presence, right? Especially that big deck on the back. But looking spectacular with the roof down. Roof up, we're gonna see in a sec. You tell me what you think. Don't love it as much. But the roof down, it's nice. A couple things to call out here. We've got this big kick up coming up towards where the uh, folding fabric roof is gonna be stored under that. So it accentuates that, but it's not a huge dome back here like we see on some convertible rivals. It's smoother, more well integrated. It's got a bit of a raised portion there, but then levels off into a flat piece back here. And I prefer that. I think that's styled well. Like the front, we've got some air channeled to the rear tires and brakes. And moving along towards the back, more good angles. It's both smooth and sharp. They found a way to integrate it well. The lines, the creases are sharp, but the curves are smooth. Here's another good curve right here. The integrated trunk, smooth in here and then pinched. And it just works. I like that. Here's that big deck I was talking about. And this is all leather up here adding to the high quality look and feel of the car. And you can see your first glimpse at that toasted caramel interior. It's, again, Lexus's name for it, not caramel, toasted caramel. You gotta have your caramel toasted in the LC500 convertible. At the back, we see some LED tail lights with this really cool 3D tunnel effect. Like you just follow the lights on in, love that. Turn signals like the front are gonna be teardropped down there and more of this dark metal trim mixed with more chrome pieces up top. Getting down to the bottom here, we've got a black finished, black gloss diffuser with chrome accents inside and exhaust finishers. And just one exhaust port it looks like on either side. LC500 badging. And that's your exterior. Sharp, smooth, alluring, handsome. All these words describe the LC500 convertible. I am a fan of the exterior. How about that interior though? Let's take a peek. Now, typically when I go to these interiors, I will park the car in the shade so it's uniformly in shadow not harsh shadows in various places, I apologize for that. But in this case, I wanted to park it in the sunlight so you could see the leather and you could see that it's not just one color leather, it's actually two colors. So you've got this lighter shade on the fronts of the seats and then a darker shade on the back of the seats and up here on the deck. I like that, that's that toasted caramel. So maybe this is the toasted part, this is the not yet toasted part of the caramel. I don't know, I'm making stuff up. On the touring package models, you do have the Leg Lexus logo embossed on the back of the headrest and semi-aniline leather for the front seats, very soft, good quality. But of course I need to get into the cabin, so the way I do that is I press on this portion of the door handle. It does have smart key access, so you can leave the key in your pocket to lock and unlock the car. Press in, you can see the Lexus badge, then you pull the handle, door swings out, and we see a truly gorgeous cabin. The architecture, the design of this is remarkably beautiful. Big fan. And I like that they didn't overdo it. Apart from the two tones of the leather, there's not a lot of contrast stitching here, maybe in the red of the body color, or anything else to distract you from the beauty of the design. So we do have nice details like the uh, design work of the stitching on the seat centers, and this quilting portion over here that kind of expands in its design. 
that's all nice, but they don't overdo it in any place. Heated and ventilated front seats as part of the touring package. You do also get Lexus Concierge climate control. So basically, depending on the state of the weather around you, the temperature inside the cabin, the car knows whether it wants to cool you with ventilation, heat you, and even use the neck curtain heating that comes from these vents right here. That feels awesome, by the way. And the heated steering wheel, it'll activate that if needed, and it will blow hot air on the backs of your hands too. The Lexus Concierge, I like that. Down here, we've got some brushed metal touches like the tread plates with this raised Lexus on top of that. We've got aluminum plated pedals. You can see that leather is used not sparingly, generously throughout the cabin with some stitching accents here and up on the dashboard. And then we have a piece of microfiber suede, Alcantara up here. Love the different textures. I'm a tactile person. I'm a tactile person. I don't know why I said that twice. Up here, this is a fun feature. This will illuminate green if the doors are locked. It will go transparent if the doors are not. I don't think I've ever seen that on any other car, but it's just fun to look over and say, oh yes, the doors indeed are locked. No one's going to come steal my car. Looking down here, we see more artful designs. I like the three lines as they expand towards the grab handle there. The metal brush trim up and down and the curvature, they just, I mean, they care. They really show that they care with the interior design work. And then you've got this cross-hatched cross pattern that even winds along the armrest. Nice, nice touches. Down here, it does turn into plastic, but it still is a softer plastic. It's not that hard, scratchy stuff that we find on less premium vehicles. It doesn't have logos anywhere here, but we do find one here for the 13-speaker Mark Levinson sound system. Not being a super audiophile, I can't really tell you whether it's the best sound system, but it's a good one. And before we hop in, we need to address the fact that this is on paper, a four seater. One, two, three, four, count the chairs. But I ask you, who would torture anyone, adult or child, by placing them back here? That's the leg room. Of my seating position at six feet tall, okay? No one is going to fit back there, no one. So these are decorative, or they are places to put your backpack or your groceries or something you don't want to go put in the trunk. The, no one's going to sit back there. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'll try. So you pull this handle right here. See to go forward. It'll take a second to get up there. Uh, and we're good. There is a decent size opening for me to get back here with my body. Oh, don't trip, Miles. And then we're sitting here and oh my gosh. Oh, it's so bright. Oh, it's so upright. I'm not comfortable, guys. This is just like a straight angle. And yeah, okay, I just wanna, what happens when I put the seat back? Is it going, oh, it doesn't even want it. Okay, that's it. Oh, no, please stop. Okay, it, that's good. It resisted, it felt the resistance, and it knew to go forward two inches. That still doesn't help me because my legs are squished off to one side or the other of the seat. And I doubt I could probably close that door. I mean, yeah, I'd probably close the door. But no, I wouldn't want to sit like this. And with a convertible top up, I, I don't even, no, there's just not a chance. It wouldn't work. Guys, it's not going to work. But I did it because I love you all, and I want you to see. I want you to see me struggle. Okay, so that's the rear seats. Other cargo storage solutions include a trunk. Ever heard of it? Coming to the back, we've got 3.4 cubic feet of space. There's a regular size backpack for reference. So you can fit like probably three, maybe four of those, which probably equates to two good sized duffel bags, two medium sized suitcases, or it's appealing to the clientele here, two sets of golf clubs, bags. Yeah, you could fit two golf clubs, but probably more than that, two sets of golf bags back here with many clubs. All right, that's your trunk. 
Let's get inside. Close that door. Nice solid sound there. And take a peek. Do a quick pan. Nice. All right, so let's talk about the steering wheel. Nice thickness here. We've got some perforation at nine and three. And then complete leather border. It is heated, as I mentioned, with the touring package. And then a nice leather piece above the airbag. Lexus logo. And most likely plastic, but it looks and feels high quality. Then we've got some aluminum paddles here. Good size ones as well. As well. Nice travel. And then up there, we're going to have our digital instrument cluster. And let's see it in action. So we press the start stop button, and we're going to get a welcome sequence. Ooh, it's nice. All right, so all of your most pertinent information is here. You've got your tachometer, you've got your speedo, got some trip info, but then the info apart from that can change. So we press this button here on the steering wheel and the gauge moves over. How cool is that? And then you've got various settings, telemetry data, media, trip info, all that is right here. Ooh, and a G meter. You're not going to use that in this car. Okay, so that's that. Then it moves back. You've got your drive mode displayed there. How you control your drive modes is with this set of antennas here, left and right. On the left side, you've got snow and traction control. Hold that to turn off traction control. On the right, we've got a bunch of different drive modes. Press in for normal, press one more time to get to custom. Boop. Boop. And then crank up to get to sport. Changes up the dial a bit. I'll show you that one more time. Sport. And then crank up one more time for Sport Plus. That's cool. And then it's a redundancy over there. Crank down, and you're going to get to Comfort. And one more time, and you get to Eco. All of those are shown there, so you know what drive mode you're in all the time. Man, I just love this Alcantara up here. It's so nice. As an option on this car, beyond the touring package, we have a head-up display. Not the sharpest thing in the world, but it does have tuck a tachometer on there. Wipers, turn signals, and then some adjustments for your active safety features. So as standard, you get Lexus's safety plus group of active safety goodies, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, um, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. All of that is bundled as standard. That's pretty nice. Volume controls over here. Trunk release, head up display, turn on and off, open your fuel tank. And then moving over. I just, I mean, there's such nice details with the stitching and the leather work. I like this grab handle in the center here. You've got two grab handles for this passenger. I guess you really need to hang on. But I just, the design work is so, it just, it's very, I, I'm losing words here, guys. I, I like it a lot. And the brush metal trim as accents there. So, the oh my gosh. Guys, there's a CD player in this car. I think I just noticed that. They hit it well. There's a CD player in a 2021 model year car. What it, okay. So that's a thing. Climate control, you've got some buttons here. For the rest of it, you're gonna have to go into the 10.3 inch infotainment. It is not a touch display. There's this big glass piece, plastic piece I should say, that runs at an angle down, reduces glare, but yeah, it's not a touch display. You have to use this trackpad here. Great in theory, poor execution. I am not a fan of how this works. It's designed such, such that there are like four quadrants and it's supposed to work like a computer trackpad, I suppose, 
but it just ends up being very frustrating. It never goes exactly where you want it to go. Sometimes it'll read your input, sometimes it'll skip to. It just, it doesn't always work very well. Not a big fan of that. You do, however, as your saving grace, have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Android Auto is new for 2021. And so with those things, you can get by. You still have to use the trackpad because it's not touch, but you can make it work. You've got a volume control here radio, media, map, menu, and back button. Navigation is standard in this car. Sirius XM radio, all that good stuff. And then this is fun. Leather, nice, you know, looking, feeling, gear selector, but then the orientation of a Toyota Prius. So over, up, reverse, back down, drive, down one more time for manual, auto hold, Love cars without a hold, that's a that's a plus. But just it just feels weird if you've ever driven a Prius to be like, oh, this is my hundred thousand dollar Lexus. Yeah, it's got the same same orientation. You get used to it, but the first few times it's just frustrating. Off to the right here, we've got an analog clock with some nice details in on the clock. And then speaking of nice details, this is again not something with texture, because there's that plexi panel there but it looks pretty cool they just seem to think everything through in this car that's that's my takeaway moving our way back more leather on the center console here looks and feels sublime that's a big look at the size of the center console wow and then we've got a stitched border there dark metal trim piece here that if you press down and pull back will reveal a cubby where you find our key on the front, we've got the Lexus badge, textured black with a dark metal border. On the back, we've got lock, unlock, and hold for the trunk release, and then Lexus written out down at the bottom. The weight is average. Doesn't feel that high quality to me. If you want more storage, you're gonna lift up there, and we will reveal a pretty decent sized cubby here with two USB ports, USB, not USB-Cs, aux port and then a DC socket. So you've got some connection ports. Press that down and we'll go back. That's pretty nice and smooth. And then we've got a hidden cup holder that I I don't know yet. We have to do the big bottle test, but I don't know if it's going to fit my large water bottle. Let's find out. Big bottle test. Lexus LC500 convertible. Getting it on. It's going to not really fit at all. I mean, I guess I could stay there, but that's going to be in the way. That's a fail. Door pocket. No. I mean, it'll sit between... Yeah, again, it doesn't work. Um, well, I'm going to try the center storage area. I don't know if it's going to... Oh, what the... Yeah. That is incredible. In a car like this, to fit a big bottle, I am impressed. Our Lexus LC500 convertible you pass you pass the big bottle test well done but then I'm left wondering how do I put down or raise the soft top do you see any buttons here I don't which is really how I felt for 10 minutes trying to find the controls and then I realized they're hidden in this compartment right here. How covert is that? Look at that. You would never know. I mean, unless you're smarter than me, I guess. Then you'd know. Raise that up and it reveals your controls for raising and lowering the soft top and the windows on the side. So let's do it. Let's put up, sorry, the top's already down. Let's put up that soft top. It's going to be a 16 second process. I'm not gonna make you count it out with me. And then it dings to say it's done, but really there's one more step, and that is to raise the windows as well, which happens pretty fast. Okay, now with it up like this, let's see how it looks from the outside. All right, top is up. We are back in the sun. How do we think it looks? I don't mind it. 
I don't know if I would choose a black top with a red body and the tan interior. I think those three together may not work. You can choose a beige top. Maybe that's what I would choose if I wanted this color combo. So maybe not black, but the design of the top, I don't mind. I like that it's a pretty narrow strip up there, not too much fabric. And I also like that it leaves the convertible design language to be accentuated, to be emphasized. So we still got that kick up line here and really you, with the top up, can picture it without it. It still looks like the convertible. Not every convertible looks okay with the top up. This one does. Yeah, I think they pulled it off. What do you think? Disagree? Agree? Let me know in the comments. Certainly not as pretty as the coupe. But then again, I think even with the top down, it doesn't look as pretty as the coupe. That's just me. All right, let's hop into the car. Let's put the top down, which will take all of 15 seconds, 16 to put it up, 15 to put it down. bell tells us we're done and you know what we got to do now we got to rev this sucker up which is not going to help the fuel economy 15 city 25 highway 18 combined yeah that's that's not going to help revving it but you know what we got to do it so oh let's get this show on the road just take a second and present to you one of the best sounding engines you can find in a car today. That's this. It's a 5 liter naturally aspirated V8. It makes 471 horsepower, 398 pound feet of torque, not segment leading numbers. And the 0 to 60 time for this 4,500-ish pound convertible is 4.6 seconds. Again, not segment leading. But what is segment leading in my heart, in my heart of hearts, the sound this engine makes, gosh, it's good. It's really going to make me miss naturally aspirated high displacement motors when they're finally done and dusted. But until then, there's a lot of that. A lot of that. I do that a lot, off camera and on camera. Okay, so apart from the engine, which is so good. You've got a 10-speed automatic gearbox here, which 10 just sounds like way too many gears, but somehow they pull it off. It's a good transmission that in Sport Plus downshifts pretty darn quick, gives you the gear you want. Of course, in manual mode, but also in automatic mode if you let the car do its own thing, and it'll do that. It'll just, in Sport Plus, it'll downshift and give you some really sensational music. It's a good gearbox, and I like these paddles. They're good size. I like the feel of pulling them. It makes me want to do it a lot. But that's all performance stuff. Keeping on that theme, how are the driving dynamics? Well, I'm gonna take it out of Sport Plus for a sec as I explain this. They're good, but let's keep in mind, this is a convertible, and for the most part, this is set up as a Grand Tour. So when you get into a corner and you take it pretty hard, you're gonna feel a tiny bit of chassis flex and the steering is gonna give you the lightness and the precision you want, but it's not going to completely engage you, not like a Porsche will. And that really just sticks with the theme. This is a Grand Tour, it is so comfortable, the engine sounds so good, and the force of acceleration is really there mid-range and from a dig. I have no complaints in terms of the performance. I will not harp on the way this car handles in a corner, the little nitpicks that I could do. Because really, you shouldn't be taking this to a racetrack, even the coupe, not that car. Uh, and 
even on a tight canyon road, it just doesn't seem like the character of the car. Long sweepers, fast straights, that's the LC500 convertible. And we'll leave it at that in terms of performance. How you feel on a daily basis, that is what I want to spend some time talking about. You put the top down. If you live in Southern California or a place that's warm, temperate like this, you're going to want to put that top down all the time because two things. One, so you can hear the engine better because that doesn't get old. But two, because they've engineered so well the lack of wind buffeting. Other cars, what you get when you put the top down, flap, 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 and it gets so annoying so quick. This car, freeway speeds now. Let's just get up there. 65 miles an hour. It's great. It's awesome. The high windows, the high belt line, that extra wind buffer glass in the back, it is so good at filtering out that annoying wind buffeting that happens typically in cars, such that you're like, well, I don't really have a reason not to put the top down. If it's not raining, we should put that top down. And another thing that helps in that regard, even if it's chilly, even if it's a chilly morning, you may want to put that top down because the Lexus Concierge, yeah, I love that. Lexus Concierge, Concierge, uh, will use the neck curtain warmers or the steering wheel heating or the vents to blow hot air on your hands. It'll even use all those things to just make you comfortable. And that's what this car is about. The seat is so supportive, so comfortable, ergonomically designed. I found a great driving position. The suspension, the adaptive dampers know what they're doing. They're right in that sweet spot between firm and taut. So it really handles itself well in a corner, but also not like melted stick of butter soft. So it's plush. It soaks up those, those bumps. It doesn't deliver it to your body. They've just done such a great job with the driving dynamics of this car. And it's just such a pleasure to motor around in all the time. So good. The safety features, I have some quibbles with those. Yes, all the suite of Lexus Safety Plus, whatever they call it, is standard. For the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping assist. But I was not finding that on the highway, the lane keeping assist was actually doing its job. It let me go well out of my lane, into the second person's lane, the one over left or right, and then maybe like, oh shoot, look what we did. Then it might correct you, but then ping pong you to the other side. So the lane keeping assist system needs work. It's not on the level of like BMW and Mercedes Benz. Certainly not there. So little quibbles there. That may help it as a grand tour if they can fix that stuff. But in terms of driving dynamics, Literally no, no complaints about this car, none. But we gotta frame it for what is your $102,000 as tested, we're looking at 112, but what does that buy you relative to what you could buy? Well, we have already said Porsche. We've got the Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. That starts at $113,000, makes less power. So higher starting price, less power, 379 horsepower. Zero to 60 is gonna be quicker, 4.2 seconds and top speed is going to be higher at 180 miles an hour. Glad some of my monitoring works. Knew I couldn't change anything. Um, then we also have, was just in the non-complete R, but the R dynamic version, the 2021 Jaguar F-Type R convertible. That's going to start at $108,000, I believe, and make significantly more power, 575 horsepower and the top speed's gonna be higher, 186 miles an hour. The zero to 60 is gonna be faster, 3.5 seconds to 60, but it is not in any way going to give the same level of comfort and pleasure driving this. And I don't think it looks as good with the changes for 2020, 2021. I don't think it looks as good as this. So then that leaves the Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. What do I think about that or this? Would I spend the few extra dollars to get the cab or would I go for this LC500 convertible? It's gonna be this car for me, and I'll tell you why. Because frankly, I don't like how 911 convertibles, cabriolets, whatever you wanna call it, I don't like how they look. They've got that huge bump behind the second row of seats here that just never does it for me. Over the years, maybe it's gotten better. I, you know, I can't really tell, honestly. It just doesn't look as good as the coupe version, the classic coupe of that car. The coupe of that car versus the LC500, now that would be a conversation, but the Cabriolet really doesn't hold the car for me. This car is seriously the best in its segment. 
for $102,000 to start, 112 as tested. I can't think of a better way to spend my money if I needed a convertible. If I wanted a convertible with this kind of power and this kind of presence and comfort, you just can't beat the LC500 convertible. Ah, all the time, Matt, please, all the time.